Hey YouTube. Today I'm working on my 2008 Fleetwood Icon uh, Class C motorhome. It's a Dodge slash Sprinter based chassis with a Fleetwood coach on it. And I haven't had it all that long and it took me a while to figure out some of the problems that I've been having with it. And hopefully this will fix it. Um, the main problem was that the chassis was not charging the house batteries. And as you're going from place to place, the alternator on the chassis is supposed to charge the house batteries and the chassis battery. The chassis battery was fine. House batteries were not getting charged. Conversely, when you're plugged into shore power, or when I was plugged into shore power, the coach batteries would charge, but it wouldn't didn't seem to be charging the chassis batteries. So that was a big problem. Um, and I've pretty much torn apart the entire electrical system trying to figure out what was going on. But for those of you that think that this, this video is already too long, this is the culprit. It's a 150 amp bus fuse that connects the chassis to the coach. At least one of the connections, the main connection from the chassis to the coach, is located under the driver's seat. So, let me show you what's going on. First I'm going to put this in and I'll show you all the symptoms that I had and uh, hopefully all those symptoms will be gone now. All right, let me show you where that bus fuse is. You can see I've taken out the seat already. And right down here, there's a rubber boot. You can see the fat wire coming in on one side and out the other. There's where that bus fuse is. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. I get in here, there's a little tab right here that you can unhook and that exposes it. So before I mess with that though I'm going to unhook the battery. All sprinters have a battery disconnect right here. That's for the negative, for the ground. So you push on that red button and pull it out. Okay now we are disconnected. No matter what I do with the battery it's not going to short out. So I can leave the negative battery our terminal connected because I just disconnected it right here. But I'm still going to take this out, the positive. I'm going to disconnect it. Um, here we have a you know a really big terminal with a bunch of connectors on there. I'm going to try to pull that off and show you what that is. And I can't do that one-handed, unfortunately. I think that's a 10 millimeter bolt on the on the. Um, it's a 10 millimeter bolt here on the clamp. It's already loosened and you just have to work that up and down, work that loose. Sometimes if you take a screwdriver in between the parts that expand, you can help it expand a little bit and uh, carefully work it up and down so you don't break anything. I can get in there to work it. There we go. Alright, so we pull that thing up out of there. And there's little plastic tabs here, right here. So this piece right here just has to be levered off right there. And that'll take the cover off. Now let's get over on this other side where you can see it. So this is the big, I guess you'd call it a bus bar. And it's got one, two, three, four, five things connected to it. Each of them have their own fusible link. Um, but when Fleetwood installed a coach on this chassis, they put a really heavy wire up here, ran it back underneath the seat, right through here, to the, right here to this bus fuse, 150 amp bus fuse. Um, made, I guess they figured that the wires were too stiff to run off that big bus bus bar on the battery. That would have been the easiest place. That's the first place I looked. Okay, so let's pull that thing out of there. Just to remind you, everything's disconnected. Shouldn't be any fires or explosions or startles.
All right, so this is difficult to get off of here. It's a little bit too tight between the terminals. So you have to lift this straight off. It doesn't want to lift one side at a time. You can't get under it to pry it off. All right, so there it is. All right, so let me put the, the new one back on there. All right, so I'll just put the bolts back on, snap this thing back in place, and we'll be good to go. Okay, so I've got the bad buzz fuse out, it's hooked up to an ohm meter. This is how you, you test it. Now you can test it in place, but you, you're not going to be guaranteed you're going to get a good reading because there could be uh, feedback through some of these other circuits. So you'll get a connection from here to here, but it doesn't go through here. So we're set on ohms. You can see right now we're at very low ohms. Let's make a connection. So we got nothing. If we go over here, see we got a connection. I'll get them. Try again. See on this side we have a connection. Over here we got nothing. We make a tighter contact. See, there's nothing there. Over here, we've got connection. So this is burnt out. And you can also tell by this wiggly. It's sort of a little hard to show on camera, but it does wiggle. All right, I think that's about it. Yeah, the batteries are engaged. The coach batteries are engaged. And the um, chassis is turned off. So 12.7 volts, essentially. Here we are with the engine running before I replace the buzz fuse. You can see the volts are 12.7. Uh, we should be getting close to 14 volts if the alternator is charging these coach batteries. Okay, the buzz fuse has been replaced. The coach batteries are engaged. The chassis is turned off. Now, what will happen Hopefully, when I turn on the ignition, there's a, down in here, actually over this direction, there's a, a relay, a time delay relay, that will engage the chassis to the coach batteries. That wasn't working before, so let's, I'm going to go and turn it on. You'll hear the engine start, then after some number of seconds, you're going to hear a click of the relay, and then the voltage will go up. All right, we're still at 12.82 volts. All right, there was a click and the voltage went up. So that means the chassis has engaged and the alternator is not charging the coach batteries. There's one more thing to do. Okay, for this test, um, the engine is running and the chassis is charging the coach batteries. The, the coach batteries are turned on. So I'm going to go up past the camera here and flip the switch to turn the coach batteries off to see if this still is charging when the coach batteries are turned off. Okay, you heard the click, and the batteries are still charging. So, when you're going down the road, these batteries should charge. That's what mine are going to do now, whether or not the chassis batteries or the coach batteries are engaged or not. So that's quite a relief, I tell you. Quite a relief indeed. This has bugged me for a long time. This is the propane sensor. We're running on the coach batteries. Um, the indicator light is on. But for the propane sensor, 
no indicator light. So anytime we run on the batteries only, we're not, our propane sensor is not working. You can see the green light is on and the engine is running, so we're getting some power from the chassis. Here's another good thing, the propane leak detector is working. The chassis is turned off. It's been off for quite a while, that's just running on the battery, the coach battery. The chassis is turned off. Let's see what happens when I test these. I can still get the auxiliary batteries are working, I had that turned on. I get nothing from the chassis, nothing from the LP black water. So none of these work. The only thing that works is the auxiliary battery as far as the gauges. The engine is running, so when I push this button it shows that the auxiliary batteries are full. The main, which is supposed to be the chassis battery, is full. Now I can test the propane tank, black water, gray water, fresh water. That all works when the engine is running. It also works when it, we're plugged into shore power. So here's the control panel again. You can see we're on the coach battery. The engine is turned off. The chassis has been off for 20 minutes. Check the aux battery, main battery, LP, black water, gray water, and white water. All right. Okay, so here's one of the symptoms. <clears throat> when the engine's running, these steps will go in and out. Although I can't turn them off, so they stay out when the door's shut. When it's on battery right now, they should open and close. I get nothing. I had to extend these with the engine running. I'm going to flip the entry step switch that's supposed to make this stay out just to make sure it's not wrong. I'm going to flip it. See, the stairs should close. They are not. Okay, so right now the battery, the house battery is at 12.7 volts, which is a little low, but not bad. I'm going to turn on the engine and I'll show you that these do work. All right, the engine's running and I'm waiting for the timer to switch over to chassis power. And I'll be able to tell when it does because the propane sensor, propane leak sensor will beep. It takes a fairly long time for it to happen. Right, I didn't hear the sensor. There we go. Okay, so the, the timer delay switched, opened the relay, now the steps work. The chassis is off, the battery is switched on, let's see if these stairs work. All right, <laughs> I'll tell you what, that is quite a relief. All right, so I'm going to turn off the switch and see if they stay up or stay out. Yay! All right. All right, on to the next thing. While you're still here, I'll explain to you how I figured out that that fuse, um, fusible link was bad. So I bought the RV in the winter, um, brought it home, charged up the batteries, everything seemed to be okay. The previous owners had, had it parked in a storage lot and let the batteries run down. They'd shown it to a number of people and jump-started the RV and um, actually charged the, the batteries, the, the coach batteries, with a, a car as well. So probably when they did that they burned out that fusible link. I'm not sure exactly how it could happen but that's my best guess. So I, I, I got it home, charged it up, cleaned it up, changed the tires and a bunch of other stuff and we headed out on a trip and the mistake was we went on a long trip should have gone on a short trip and figured things out um, the thing didn't have an owner's manual when we got it um, I'd never owned an RV before so I really didn't know what to expect so we would drive and camp, drive and camp, drive and camp we were heading toward California and after about four times of camping they, we would run out of battery which didn't make any sense because we weren't using a lot of power at night and um, 
it's supposed to charge, the battery, coach battery is supposed to charge as you're going down the road from the chassis. Uh, the alternator, the alternator of the chassis is supposed to charge the coach batteries when you're going down the road. So we shouldn't have run out of battery every night, or after four nights, it should have been topped up every day. But we did run out of battery, particularly when we camped in Arizona and it was really cold and we had to run the heater, the furnace. So, you know, I got to California and uh, charged up everything and it seemed to be okay. I posted some questions online out of Sprinter forum to try to figure out why the batteries were not charging. It didn't seem like they were charging when I went down the road and I explained the symptoms, which I've detailed earlier in this video. And the common consensus on the forums was, oh, it's your batteries. 99% of all these electrical problems all go back to the coach batteries. And so that's like 10, you know, 9% of, or 9%, 90% of the people that commented said that. The rest of them said that it was one of these right down here in this box. There's a, a delay uh, circuit that delays the transfer from coach to chassis when you start the engine. And uh, <clears throat> there's a relay that disengages the coach batteries. They all said, well, that could be it. No one mentioned this, this fuse. So it just went on for months. Well, back up a little bit. I'm still in California. We drove back. I was thinking at this point that everything was okay because the batteries seemed to check out. But once again, after I think five nights of camping with driving every day in between, our batteries wasn't enough to pull in the, um, the slide out. And I had to start up the generator to charge the batteries to pull the slide out in. So I started thinking about it and I had been reading about it online as limited as much as I could because this was our source of internet information on the road. Um, and it seemed to me that it just wasn't charging while we were going down the road. So I went to an auto parts store and I got a six foot battery cable and I tied the coach battery with the chassis battery, tied it together. The battery charged up just fine and we didn't have any trouble the rest of the way. Now, of course this is a pain because it wasn't automatic. I had to unhook it every time we stopped, hook it back up every time we left. And I was worried that I'd be, you know, overcharging something or doing something wrong, but it worked. So I got home and I started going through the thing. I checked every relay, checked every circuit, checked every fuse, charged it, uh, charged the batteries up with a trickle charger so that they were, and then where they're optimally charged. And then I would do uh, power draw tests. I don't know what the actual name of that is, but uh, hooked up an inverter to the batteries and powered an electric clock and some lights. So I had about 400 watts of draw on it. That's a little bit more than the 20 hour draw test. Um, lead acid batteries are rated for in different ways, for a five hour draw, a 10 hour draw, 20 hour draw, and I think 72 hour draw. And the slower you draw the batteries down, the more amp hours you get. So I figured that I would, you know, I would try to check the 20 hour test. So, that worked out to 300 and something watts. 400 was close enough. So the problem is the cheap inverter that I had would cut out as soon as it hit 12 volts. And those um, long draw tests, or the battery's supposed to go to 10 and a half volts. So when drawing 400 watts, I got seven hours out of these batteries. And they still had 12 volts left after seven hours. So I figured there's nothing wrong with these batteries. And I did the test twice. And um, still, I posted on forums, wanted to know the answer to the problem, and everyone said battery. And I, even though in my post I said I tested the batteries with a draw test, there's nothing wrong with the batteries. And I, I, I would say these symptoms happen even when the battery is hot. So, but I got no help. So finally, I just started looking for things online, and I found some instructions on how to install an auxiliary battery in a, in a Class B Sprinter van. And for that, the battery goes up front. But in the directions, they showed that there is a, a connection point under the driver's seat. And I was unaware of that up before that. So I peered underneath that driver's seat. And it was really hard to see, but I could see that big fat wire that came off the battery under there and maybe a fuse block uh, tied in. So I pulled off the seat, and lo and behold, there was a buzz fuse down there. Pulled the buzz fuse out and tested it and there was no circuit, no complete circuit on the buzz fuse. So 
that was it. So I put the new bus fuse in and the rest was history. It all works now. So I didn't put this at the front because of the video because most people would just click off and go away. So I try to give you all the information you really need up front and then if you're really bored you can continue listening. So that's all for now.